Hello everybody, Cy Starcraft here with another 1 vs. 1 Starbo commentary. I hope you guys are enjoying these as much as I am. Uh, looks like I'll be getting a game with TT1 in a little while. Hopefully I'll be able to cast that. Today it's going to be... Uh, me versus Bunker, that's what I'm trying to say. My opponent Bunker is going to be in the bottom right as the yellow Zerg, and I'm going to be in the top right as the pink Zerg. The map is Fighting Spirit, I believe it is. I don't really know the maps by what they look like just yet. Let me check the volume real fast. Okay, volume's good. So, uh, something a little different than any ZVP, although I do have another ZVP coming for you either today or tomorrow, possibly. And I know some of you want to see Heart of the Swarm, some of you don't want to see Heart of the Swarm, but I gotta tell you, man, I was watching some uh, StarCraft 2 streams last night, and it was terrible. The ZVPs were terrible. I cannot express enough how terrible the metagame is. How many times can I use that word? Or in Dustin Browder. Uh, how bad the metagame is in Heart of the Swarm. I, I was watching a control stream, and while, you know, he's not the greatest player in the world, so he might not be the best definition of a good metagame, it... It was it was awful. It was just force field, force field, force field. Up, oh, can't fight. Force field, force field, force field. Can't fight. Oh, we both got five bases, and I'm just using locusts and swarm hosts, and you're just kind of hanging back and not doing anything. Oh, mass tempest. I'm trying to attack you with corruptors, but tempest beat corruptors, and storm does too. I'm trying to attack you with hydras, but you know storm. I'm trying to abduct you, but I get feedback. I'm trying to use uh, you know swarm hosts, but uh, obviously they can't attack air. It's it's awful. It was the worst experience of my life watching just one StarCraft VOD or one StarCraft stream just for a little bit. And so I'm sticking with Starbo for the time being. Uh, apologize if you guys don't like it because I do. And, you know, uh, a lot of you have uh, emphasized that when I'm enjoying the game that I'm playing, you enjoy watching it a lot more. And clearly, I do enjoy this game. I'm even doing replay casts. That means I'm going through a game twice just to bring you the content as opposed to just doing it live but anyway we have a 10 pool here and we have a 50 or a 12 hatch for me so 10 pool pretty good against a 12 hatch spawning pool coming on 12 usually I wait until 13 but I thought well this guy might be doing something pretty cheesy and he was actually fortunate enough to uh, see my passing overlord so he knows I'm in the top right he didn't even have to scout me so we have six slings coming to me uh, we've got two more on the way. He's got Ling Speed coming as well. Looks like he's not even pulling off gas though, so he's going to have a lot of ex excess gas. I'm not sure what he's going to do with. And these Ling's coming as my hatchery is finishing, and I have a choice. Do I want to cancel the hatch? I choose not to cancel the hatch, but that's forgetting that Ling's in Starbo do a lot more damage than they did in StarCraft 2. My spawning pool just now finishing. Uh, I do have 100 gas, however, I forgot to get my Ling Speed. I should probably be pulling off of gas as well. And looks like this hatchery will go down. Queen trying to be produced transferring some drones partially to you know mine the natural but partially just to distract these lings because I have a lot more production than my opponent and the thing about Starbo is the extra hatchery is insane amount of production even if he has a queen the queen increases production by 65 percent but obviously a hatchery increases production by a hundred percent so uh, I do have the production advantage here so if I can keep this hatchery alive and use some drones to maybe sacrifice some drones then I can eventually get more lings out and fight him off so you can see here he's focusing down the queen queen doing a lot of damage and these lings actually popping out helping out and uh, taking down some of the lings. He's still got two remaining lings though, and they do have speed and mine don't. So he's doing some dancing around the hatchery. It's going down very short, uh, slowly, eight damage every time he picks away at it. My speed isn't on the way. I thought at this point that I had researched speed, but apparently I hadn't. 79 damage with the queen is finally out, and rage is gonna scare those lings off. And uh, I am going to survive. So if we check out the harvester tab, I'm up by two on harvesters. He's trying to pick some more off. He is gonna take one down, but again, while he has done a little bit of damage, he's actually going a really fast layer too. Holy cow, and he's getting a spine crawl. I'm not sure if that's necessary. Although I guess he wants to start producing drones, so maybe it is. I have a lot of lings out myself. and So I do have the production advantage. I have the drone advantage. And I'm not really sure how he's going to follow it up. Because a million times in this situation, when I think I'm safe, I start droning up. And then he just comes at me. Someone just comes at me with just so many units. So I'm kind of playing it safe, linging up. Not really able to get any scouting information because I forgot my speed. I'm still wondering where is my speed. And I haven't even started to research it yet. So now we're seeing some drones. We're seeing a pretty good reaction from Bunker. He's actually uh, droning up, getting a very fast spire. So uh, now you have to realize in Starbo, larva count is a lot less than in StarCraft 2. So I did not need this many lings. It's not like he can get an inject and have 10 more lings out immediately or 8 more lings out or, you know, something like that. So 
Um, definitely an overreaction on my part to get all these lings and the spine. Hatchery is low on health, so maybe that's part of the reason. I thought he would be like, well, this hatchery is low. Let me just make a bunch of lings and try to finish it off. But no, instead he is going to be going for the mutas. Problem here is on one hatch with a spire, he can only get three mutas at a time. So again, Starbo, macro hatch is very important. So we're going to see where this decides to go from here. Speed is finally on the way. Drone's on the way. Check out Harvesters. It's now 16 to 13. So uh, he's not too far behind there, but that's partially because I have such a li huge Ling army. Finally getting Ling speed. I wanted to move out with these Lings a long time ago, but I didn't feel confident without the Ling speed. And just think, if I had the Ling speed, you know, two, three minutes ago, when it should have started to research, these Lings would have been up in his base, and it probably would have been game over by then. But one silly little mistake, not researching Ling speed, could end up costing me the game. Now, at this point, I see that he still doesn't have a natural, and I am I can smell a Spire. It's, it's pretty obvious what he's doing. Uh, you know, you, you can almost assume that he's going to be going Spire, and you're going to see my reaction to this in just a moment. We're going to see that Evolution Chamber. Obviously, I don't really have the economy to really rely on upgrades at this point, only 20 workers. So the Evolution Chamber is going to be primarily for Spore Colonies. And here come the Mutas. Not surprised at all to see those trying to burrow down this wall. Does that even make sense? Bur burge? Bust? Bust? I don't even know. Break down this wall, maybe pick off a couple of uh, drones. One drone going down, maybe a second drone. Looks like he's going to be moving them onto the mineral patch. Yes, two drones going down, but the mutas are going to pick off the rest of the links. So the harvester count now 11 to 24. And the most important thing that attack did was not kill a bunch of links or kill two drones, but it stalled these mutas. So these spores are going to have time to get up. You can see two spores on the way. And I feel like I can't really win the muta on muta game. Scourge have the same speed as mutas. They tend to not be very effective against mutas, which I do think uh, warrants a change. And, um, uh, Mutas themselves, I, I just feel like I'm too far behind in the Spire. He's trying to go for this hatchery, but it just has enough health. I saved up the energy on the Queen to transfuse just in case I needed to. We can see the Spore shooting away at the Overlord. Spore is just doing 15 damage. Oh, wow, they actually still do 30 damage to biological units. I did not know that. Holy cow, I wonder if that's intentional. Uh, that's definitely not something that existed in Brood War. He is picking off some drones or some overlords, and we're seeing these mutas take more damage. Okay, they don't do bonus damage. It just says that they do, I think. Actually, okay, I gotta find this out. I'm sorry, you guys. It says they do 30 to bio, but that doesn't make sense if they do that. But they might. Looks like it might have five shot of that muta, so... Yeah, they do do 30 damage to bio, so that's kind of a weird... Uh, change to keep in the game. I guess mutas are effectively stacked in Starbell once again, so maybe uh, the creators felt it was necessary. One or two mutas actually dying in the main from a poor rally and taking more shots from those spores. Basically, just trying to produce a lot of hydras. I see he's just now getting his natural. I feel like I can just out harvester him 24 to 10, mass up a bunch of hydras, and just move out. So I do want to be careful about this hatchery. That's why you're seeing three spores surrounding it. We've got decent saturation at the main and natural. Um, I feel like there are diminishing returns after you get uh, one drone per mineral patch just because they bounce around a lot more they, than they do in StarCraft. So that's something I definitely want to experiment with. Let me em enable that music. That must have been annoying for you guys. It's something I definitely want to experiment how many uh, drones is optimal for a base and how much diminishing returns you uh, uh, occurs after you know one per patch is exceeded. So it's, it's going to be an interesting little thing to uh, find out. Muta's just trying to find whatever opening they can to take down some drones. Looks like he's going to find a little opening right here. Uh, microing somewhat well. Not the greatest micro in the world. These hydras just kind of chilling on the corner. He's trying to, you know, barrage these hydras. I do have plus one attack. So remember, mutas are a light air unit. That means they take half damage from hydra attack. So hydras only do five damage to mutas. Which is why they're usually not the best response to mutas. Usually you see, uh, you know, just muta on muta action, something like that. Or hopefully, like, scourge muta on muta. But, like I said, scourge, not quite where they need to be, I feel like. Maybe more, a uh, little bit more life, or I feel like even better would just be slightly more move speed than the muta. So, uh, I'm just waiting for the optimal amount of hydras. I'm waiting for my attack range upgrade as well as my plus one. And then I'll most likely be moving out. And he doesn't really have a lot of mutas to deal with. And now, at this point, I was anticipating maybe he'll have some Banelings, maybe he'll have something like that to try to take down my Hydras. But then I realized this isn't Brood War, or this isn't uh, StarCraft 2. This isn't Heart of the Swarm. He's not going to have enough Larva or money for that. Not on one base. Not even close. Because he's spending all of his Larva on uh, Mutas. 
he doesn't have a lot to drone up. So you're seeing he's just now evening the score. And these hydras are going to get some mutas out in the field. Oh my goodness, some poor micro from this <laughs> muta ball. And he sees that even despite, you know, miss microing those mutas, he just doesn't have enough to deal 20 hydras with plus one attack uh, with only eight mutas. So that's going to be a GG from Bunker. Kind of a, uh, a very decision-oriented game rather than micro or skill or anything like that he definitely could have taken down this hatchery in the early game i think that was definitely his biggest mistake but i kept him in the game by not getting my link speed so i hope you guys enjoyed that a little bit of what zvz could be like with two different builds uh, but that's going to be it so thanks for watching